see one of the conference uh, spokesmen, Matt Wandell, pushing the boundaries. Uh, it's about seahorses, because I definitely want to get a seahorse tank sometime. So let's go get a little information, guys, and go check it out. Like Gorgoni and Miracella uh, from deep brought it back to the lab, you know, um, and then in the lab saw these little wiggling things on the Gorgonia. Holy cow, those are seahorses. Um, quite a discovery. So just to set the scale, very, very tiny. This is a full grown adult female. <laughs> About an inch long at most, and that's when you stretch out the tail. So we were very interested, of course, in possibly keeping these in captivity. Um, how do we keep these right? We know how to keep seahorses. Most seahorses are easy. So what's the track record on this species, right? Obviously, it would make a great display. They're beautiful. Um, so we looked back in history. Um, back in 2003, the Waikiki Aquarium, Norton Chan and Charles Delbay uh, tried keeping a pair of this species. Um, and they kept it for about three months. They did a good job. Um, the only drawback, the reason that it didn't last any longer was that the Gorgonian started dying on them. Um, they didn't have the best system for keeping the Gorgonian alive, right? Um, so it started withering away and losing flesh, and the seahorses died shortly after. So we knew from that that it was very important that we keep the Gorgonian alive first and we work out its husbandry. And then as soon as we do that, we just keep the seahorse on it. Um, and hopefully it will do well too. Um, so we kept the Miracella, I kept the Miracella in my tank alive for around three years um, before we decided, you know, it seems like we're doing something right. We kind of know what we're doing today with this, with this Gorgonian, so let's try and keep the seahorses. So we are fortunate enough to be able to go to the Philippines and do collection trips, uh, among other places. Um, and on a, a collection trip in 2014 in May, uh, we decided we were going to try and collect a pair of picky seahorses. So uh, Rich Ross was there uh, a week, week ahead of time for me and kind of scouted out where we could um, find some picking seahorses. He found a Burgonian. This is the actual Burgonian that we collected off of. There were, I think, six or seven picking seahorses on this Burgonian. They live in colonies. Um, this one's sort of on the shallower end for where you find this Burgonian. It's usually um, about as shallow as 80 feet or so, and then it goes much, much deeper. Uh, so this is kind of prime collecting spot for it. Um, so he scouted it out ahead of time. Um, I showed up the next week, and what I did was basically we clipped off a piece of that Gorgonian about the size of my hand or so. Um, and you don't want to touch the seahorses. So what we did was took a little kind of pick, paintbrush type thing, and got the, the clipped piece of Gorgonian near the seahorses and sort of tickled them onto it so that they would go onto what they thought was their natural home, but then we could put them in a jar. Um, the very next morning, we drove to Nello with them. Uh, ship them back to San Francisco. And then we had a little home already and set up for them. This is um, a tank that's connected to that uh, tank I showed before. It's just a little satellite, 10 gallon tank. Um, it has a vortex for flow and a lot of food going in. It's really, really tough to see them. In fact, we would spend every morning basically and every afternoon and as much time as we could staring at these guys. How are they doing? You know freaking out and worrying about every single little thing about the tank. Um, we were keeping them for around, I think, a week to 10 days or so when we noticed that the male was starting to get a lot bigger, right? Getting this swollen belly, and we're like, holy crap, we're just happy to keep these things alive. Is it possible that this thing's pregnant? Um, so I told Rich to keep an eye out, watch the, watch the tank, watch the male, and the next morning, this is what he came in and found. Um, a bunch of little babies. Um, the first birth, he had was, I think, somewhere between like 60 and 70 babies. Um, very, very tall, uh, small, um, almost jet black in color. And he quickly set up a Chrysler like this to um, house them. And so, note two at the bottom of the tank, we put some Miracella in, hoping that maybe they would settle to it. We didn't know anything about these, right? This is the first time anybody's ever seen these babies before. Um, do they settle on a Gorgonian immediately the same day? We have no idea. Um, or do they float around in the plankton for a year and then settle? You know, we have no idea about these things, right? So we're just uh, making some guesses about what we should do. For